So Nate was telling me, I was going like, so Nate, I mean, 10,000 people listening to this radio show, that's a, that's a lot of people. And I go like, where, do, I mean, there's not 10,000 people in the Bob, like, what's, what's the deal? And they're going, he said, the, the Frashanti guys, that a lot of guys that are into John Frashante and the Greeny got turned on to Bob. And so we're going to set the record straight here. There's, you know, you'll have this, you'll read the, the Chili Peppers book, you'll read the Bob rewritten bi- biography of what really went down, and all this stuff. This is the story of how John Frusciante got into Thelonious Monster. John Frusciante used to rehearse, D.H. Poligro from the Dead Kennedys was hanging out, and he snatched, I think, John from Guitar Institute of Technology, G.I.T., on Hollywood Boulevard. I think it was on Sunset back in those days, but that's where, like, every, like, wannabe geek in the world went to, you know, show their parents I'm going to be a guitar player. And they like you could teach it at, like, a school how to be a rock guy. But Johnny was different. Anyway, so D.H. was rehearsing in Dickie Rude's house. Uh, they had a little uh, rehearsal studio on Sierra Bonita, where the two Free Stooges also formed. And uh, so John Frusciante came down to um, Bob's place at... Fountain and Gardner. We used to rehearse in his garage. And we later found out that the house that Bob lived in, in that little garage, was previously occupied in the 1960s by a, a little band called Steppenwolf, who lived in that house and rehearsed in that same garage. You might have heard of songs like, you know, Born to be Wild, all that kind of crap. Might have happened in that little same garage we were in. So anyways, Frashanti comes in. And we met him, and, and we we play like a couple songs, and it's obvious like the guy can wail. But he had this, he had one of those stupid haircuts at the time. He had like the long hair with the shaved sidewalls on it, you know, and the big like mouth full of teeth and all that stuff. And like third, Bob's upstairs. Bob never even came down. Bob's upstairs, like he never came to rehearsal. Still doesn't, you know. But anyway, so it's like third song. I look at Johnny, and I'm like, hey, you want to do this? And he's just grinning ear to ear. Yeah, man, yeah. All right, you're in Thelonious Monster. And then that night, I get a phone call from Flea. Uh, we were thinking that John would uh, maybe try to have him in the Chili Peppers. And I'm like, you know, we were the farm team. Of course, you know, yeah, go ahead, man. You know, sure, go ahead, whatever. And then Johnny, like, being a good guy, he worked out his, you know, he did the next couple of weeks of gigs with us. And, you know, he, you know, played with us uh, for a long time. And so for you, for Shanti guys, let me tell you, you know, Johnny's a great guy. One of the one of the best times we ever had was excuse me, 1991, when he lived up on uh, Hollywood Boulevard at the end of it, up in the hills on the house in the stilts. And we used to rehearse in his living room, and it was just you know a gla- It was just like it was everything that you ever thought that rock and roll could be. I'm like dating like the, the, the model broad that I ended up marrying or whatever, Stacy, and it was just you know boom boom glamour glamour boom 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 like you know we're going to you know this one after Bob's solo record debacle. We had like three weeks or a month to like to try to save that piece of crap record he made for RCA. And we were rehearsing up there. And uh, I remember one day I drove to McCabe's Guitar Center, bought a juice harp, jammed over to uh, Laurel Canyon where the Chili Peppers are making um, whatever, what was that record? Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Rocked the juice harp, me personally. You, you might be listening to the most listened to juice art player that has ever lived. Rocked, give it away. Got on a plane, flew to Memphis, and made that uh, not such a great record, Beautiful Mess, which is really a failed attempt at a record. Some of the stuff that the Thelonious Monster played on that's pretty good, but the Bob Solo stuff that they left on there makes me cringe. Like, I cannot believe my, my name is attached to things like um, that Tom Waits debacle, where it sounds like it's uh, Mr. Bojangles. Mr. Bojangles. It's like, what the heck is this, dude? You know, like, talk about, take, dude, have an extra dose of earnestness, why don't you? Like, whatever happened to the humor in the in Thelonious Monster? You know, like, oh, I'm all serious artists now. Dude. <laughs> Last record, California Clam Chattery, Bob lightened up. And uh, I got to say, it's, it's a great pleasure.